Hello everyone, welcome to a new vlog. Um, picking up where I left off in the last one. Um, Ohad is out walking Jacob. If you didn't meet our new pup, you will see him in this video, but I talk about how we got him in the last vlog in case you missed it or you're new here. If you are new here, welcome. So I've been reading this morning more of Island City. I really need to figure out how to pronounce the last name of this author. Um, maybe I'll try to find an interview or something. I'm about halfway. Um, the story is broken up into two parts um, and I'm in officially in the second part, chapter two. Just a little recap, um, we're following a woman who is nameless, I don't think we know her name, um, and she's in her late 30s and she is in a bar in the Midwest in the town that she grew up in called Island City and she's kind of telling her life story to a group of strangers in the bar. Um, I talked more about my initial thoughts in the last video, um, but what I have realized through my reading this morning. Um, I think this is like a dementia driven story, which I can be sensitive to um, this subject. Um, like it really, I find myself very affected by it. So now in part two, we're learning about um, her father and him being um, diagnosed with prostate cancer. And then slowly, or rather rapidly actually, in his early 50s, um, he starts showing serious signs of some kind of mental um, disintegration while she is in college. Um, and they don't call it dementia, but that's what it is. He starts to forget things, he lights his couch on fire by accident, and then goes to sleep and doesn't realize that he did it. And um, so we're at the point now where this is, she goes through the kind of chronological timeline of her life and looks at certain events or certain memories. So that's where we are now. She's, I guess, in her 20s, dealing basically with the coming death of her father um, and how it affects her and her sister. And the book a lot is about her and her sister's relationship. So if you're interested in books about sisters um, and the, like the kind of really close bonded yet tumultuous um, sisterhood, um, then definitely look at this book because it has that aspect. Um, I do still think um, that the fact that the reader is referred to as you, um, she's speaking to us, the reader, as if we're in the bar with her, um, it does get a little gimmicky and tiring to me, I must say. Um, like, I don't need the little parts where she tries to converse with us as if we're in the bar with her. Um, I just don't think that they're necessary. I think that the story would be strong enough on its own without this specific device. She's speaking about her memories um, as she tells her life story. And those memories are blurry for her and she's not sure in some ways whether she was present for that situation, whether she was told it whether it was her and her sister there or just her. Um, and it starts to lean in the direction that maybe she also is concerned with her own um, memory uh, in relationship to her father's dementia. I don't know if that's where it's going um, or if that's why she's sharing her life story with a group of strangers while she's still of a whole mind, um, but yeah, I don't know. Definitely the, the, the story got um, darker, abusive um, vibes from her toxic stepfather that is married to her mother. Um, so anyway, I'm enjoying it. It is very compelling, um, I think, my Kindle tells me I have like two hours left of the book and I think that I have to finish it today. So that says something also about 
being engaged. Hoping that the rest of the book doesn't deeply depress me. Um, I am f afraid of my parents losing their memory. Um, that is something I find really terrifying um, as a possible reality. And my grandfather suffered from mental illness. So anyway, I'm just hoping <laughs> this doesn't send me spiraling. So I'll let you know soon um, what's going on with it. We had a little Thanksgiving dinner last night, a day late with a few people. That was really cute, good food and good company. And our pup was really good about it. Um, so that was really nice. Hey, okay, that's all. I'll talk to you later. Is this not the most adorable dog you've ever seen? Choop. Mm. Oh, I love you. Okay, hi. Nighttime filming calls for the spotlight. I'm using every opportunity that I'm not the one walking the dog uh, to talk to you. Um, so I finished Island City. I basically did nothing today but watch the dog and eat and read that book. So obviously, <laughs> it really compelled me. I always find it hard to talk about books right when I finish them, although I find it like harder for other reasons to talk about them later. Um, first of all, the book like really took me by surprise. I think I had all those initial thoughts and I found it like interesting and I kind of thought it was just gonna be sort of funny, a funny self-aware, character um talking about her life and kind of making fun of her own problems or something the tone takes a shift at some point and i found myself like really emotionally um affected by this book and it really just surprised me how much it like kind of slapped me in the face with feelings i saw that amina kane who wrote Indelicacy, which I really loved this year, um, said like, it starts out, think you start out thinking this is like a funny book and then it's not. <laughs> uh, we got to the point, like I was saying earlier, that her father um, has dementia and he also gets cancer for the second time and they decide not to operate on him or do chemo because he's just, already towards the end of his capacity for living. Um, so yeah, it leads up to his death and it's just really moving. And there's something about this story and this book that really feels like a life. It's like really a life of someone. It's very real. It's very, like, I feel like you know you know this story in a way, you know this person. Like I know, I can imagine a person coming from this small town in the Midwest with this kind of family and just dealing with grief and death. This book is very much about grief and, and also alcohol abuse, addiction. It's a sad book, um, but I feel like it's, it feels like you read a real life story, kind of. Um, it has the feeling of a real person, which I think is really um, a skill to create like a fully um, fleshed out person on the page. But I read it in two sittings, basically, um, and it's over 300 pages. So for me, that's kind of not normal. The end sort of takes you to sort of present day um, and she's dealing with sort of being cut off from the rest of her family. She doesn't really keep in contact with her mother or her sister. And her relationship with her sister is a through line throughout the book and really focuses on that part in the end of the book. And it's just, 
If the book's depressing, I have to say, like definitely don't read this book if you're not in a good place um, or if you're someone that has a tendency for like self-destruction or um, spiraling easily. Um, I think make sure you're in like the right headspace for this book because um, it does go there and it's sad. Is it my favorite book I've ever read? No. Is it the kind of writing that like challenges me or um, really expands my my way of thinking about language? No, but it's still a really great book. Like it's solidly a good book, good literary fiction. If I mention this, it's um, an FSG Originals. I think it comes out in February, but I'm gonna double check that. I can be wrong. I'm curious to see if it sticks with me because it definitely did manage to like nuzzle its little way in my heart. Um, and yeah, just it's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so I wonder if I'll keep thinking about it. Hod has a drag gig tonight, so I'm gonna, I feel like a little grandma, and especially with a dog now, I feel like going to a nightclub, what the hell is that? Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna rest and drink, I don't know, a coffee or something, or a glass of wine and uh, hope that I make it there. All right, catch up with you later. Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> Cutest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Hmm? Hi, so I haven't filmed for a um, few days, almost a week, I think, since the last clip. Um, I don't know if you can see my quite pale face. Um, I have been super sick. Like, I started getting really intense stomach pain um, and fever, like a really high fever that wouldn't go down, and was continuing for a few days. And I went to a doctor and she said um, that if my stomach pain got any worse, I should go to the ER because um, she thought it might be my appendix. And when I was having the pain, I was kind of like, could it be like appendicitis or something? Because I never had stomach ache, a stomach ache that felt like that. Um, and so yesterday I woke up and it was unbearable and horrible. So I went to the emergency room which is the first time that I've ever been there. I'll insert a picture here because obviously it's the worst, like I was feeling the worst, but you have to take a pic. Got all the tests and everything and it wasn't my appendix, but I have like an inflammation in my colon. I'm just taking some medicine. They released me and I'm on a low fiber diet. So basically eating everything that a nutritionist would not tell you to eat, like white bread and white rice. Okay, so it's been fucking rough to say the least. I wasn't able to read anything. I could barely watch anything. I tried to watch um, that movie, The Wonder uh, with Florence Pugh um, on Netflix. And I could only get like halfway through it and I couldn't focus on it. Um, feeling a little bit better today. No, significantly better, because um, I'm able to stand here and talk to you. Before all of this saga happened, I was reading, um, and I will get my Kindle. Yeah, that's my good boy. 
at some point, either in the beginning of this video or in the last vlog, I mentioned this book called Brutes by Diz Tate. This is an ARC, got on NetGalley. It's on sale February 2023, out by Catapult. So, I'm not sure the writing is good. Here's my thing with it. Um, I was recording a message to Simon from um, Savage Reads, and because he has this ARC also, um, and I was saying like, Okay, we're following like a group of seventh grade girls um, who are, you know, in that time of life when they're like super angsty and they're like, we were born with rage and, you know, we're animals or like, we like fuck the system. Um, and, but that's like the tone of the writing all the time. And so I get that that's like, the, that is who the characters are, that the point of view is from. But then I wonder like, what extra language or what extra kind of, I don't know, it's hard because for example, you take like Fernanda Melchor in Hurricane Season, like she adopts completely like, the way of colloquial speaking of the people that she chooses to center her story around and she commits fully to that and whether you like it or not is something different so but that really worked for me and this to me feels like you can still write seventh grade girls in a more nuanced way or maybe i just wish to read it in a more nuanced way. Maybe some people would really like this. I'm like wondering whether to DNF or not. Um, and I've also still been reading um, the nonfiction by Cusk, uh, The Last Supper. Um, I got a little bit further in that. If someone said like they like nature writing, I wouldn't normally po point them in the direction first of like going to a Cusk book. You know, you would pick like Mary Oliver or Annie Dillard, for example. But in The Last Supper, she is like describing the house down, the nature, the textures of Italy. Um, and so I think for someone who likes nature writing, um, then you might really love this. And, and if you haven't read Cuss before and that pulls you to her, then I'm happy that you meet her really all I have to update you on. I have a pretty big performance premiere um, next week and I really like have to be healthy and strong so I'm trying to like rest as much as possible now over the weekend um, so maybe I'll go read a little bit or try to finish that movie and catch up with you later. Hi, so I'm here for an update and maybe to close the vlog out. Um, most of the life has revolved around Jacob, our puppy. <laughs> um, just high maintenance situation going on. I haven't had that much time to read, so I was hoping that I would maybe finish something else by the end of this vlog, but no. <laughs> to watch that puppy's every move to just update you on current reading. So The Last Supper, Rachel Cusk, I'm still reading it and I want to be finished with it by next 
Sunday because we have the book club meeting and I actually have a day off and I can attend and I want to participate, especially when it's cusk. So I'm a, a little, no, I'm not halfway yet, but um, yeah, I gotta bust through it. Really loving it. Very Italian, sharp, crisp, cusk prose. Um, but like a travel memoir, so that's really my kind of thing, so I love it. And I love all the art history kind of built into this. And then, alongside it, I picked up in terms of a novel, I ditched Brutes, okay? I picked up Sexing the Cherry by Jeanette Winterson. It's been in the bedside pile for a really long time. I love the cover, and obviously, Sex in the Cherry, I think, is the best title ever. And I just started it. It's like a weird, strange, discombobulated little historical novel. So that's as much as I have to say. Um, takes place in England. And there's little drawings of pineapples and bananas inside it. Definitely start a new vlog and let's focus on both of these in the next one. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm trying to get into the rhythm of doing this again. And we're gonna go eat pizza. So, have a wonderful night. Thank you for watching. Bye!